Network load balancing, as you can see in this graphic, works much different than other types of redundancy, such as NIC teaming. NIC teaming is just going to be redundant to the server itself. But when you use network load balancing, you're going to be load balancing between two different servers. So this allows us to have high availability for various different applications. So let's say that you're hosting a website and you want to put it on both servers and you want it to be redundant just in case one of the websites goes down or one of the uh, servers goes down with the website on it. So you can have a load balanced IP. So either one of these servers, and in this case, file server one and file server two, is going to respond to this 208 address which is great. So uh, that way we can have redundancy. Now, this is not the same as failover clustering. Now, failover clustering is different. I've got videos on this uh, that you'll take, take a look in my playlists on my channel, and I go over that in depth. What this is, is this is network load balancing, creating a network cluster. So a network cluster is different than a failover cluster because you're just clustering the network cards and not the entire servers, not, the, not all the different nodes that are in your cluster. Now what I have is I have file server one, which is at .115 and file server two, which is .114. We're gonna be using 208 for our network load balanced address. I'm gonna log into both servers and we're going to add a new role. I'm logged into file server one. I've got my add roles and features. And I should have said that I'm adding a new feature, not a new role, because they are slightly different. Roles generally affect everyone in the network and Active Directory, whereas features just tend to affect the computers themselves. So I'm going to keep going until I get to features, and I'm going to choose the network load balancing option on server one, as well as server two. So I'll click install, and we've completed the installation on file server one. I'll click close. And it's just about done on file server two as well. Now what we want to do is go into tools and we'll see network load balancing manager. And we'll see that both in file server one and file server two. Now you have to decide whether or not you're going to use unicast or multicast. So if you have more than one network card, then you'll want to do unicast. And if you only have one network card, you want to do multicast. Otherwise, you'll get errors when trying to add additional hosts. So let's go ahead and create the cluster and I'll show you what all that means. So I right click on network load balancing clusters, choose new cluster, and I'm going to put in file server one and click connect. And we see two different network cards. So in my case, I'm going to choose the 114 network card. The other one obviously is a, an automatic IP address, which is unusable. So we can see the dedicated IP address is uh, set to 114 and the unique identifier is set to one. That's perfect. We want it to start right away, which is also good. Click next. Now I want to put in a cluster IP address. So this is going to be an IP address that I know is not being used by anything else. There we go. Click OK and click Next. And we just see the confirmation. We could also put in an internet name and this will register that name into our DNS. So I'll type in NLB for network load balancing and it'll be appended to my Active Directory name .techpub.us. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I choose the correct option here. Unicast is generally one-to-one -one type communication. Multicast is uh, one-to-many. So the problem is, is that if you only have one network card on one or more of your, uh, your file servers, you've got to choose multicast. Otherwise, you won't be able to connect to your other servers. If you have multiple network cards, you can do unicast, and it'll choose the dedicated IP address, and those IP addresses will talk back and forth to each other. So if one or more of your servers has only a single NIC, and in my case, my uh, file server two only has one NIC, I have to choose multicast. Otherwise, choose unicast. Click next. Uh, this is the part where you can block or allow ports. So it's sort of a mini firewall separate from your regular firewall. So it allows you to say TCP, UDP, or both, and what types of port uh, range you're going to allow or to not allow. I'm going to click finish because I don't need to block anything. And we see that it's being all set up. And it's usually going to take a few minutes. And you want to make sure that it says that the cluster has started. And now it's been added. Now I want to right click on my IP address for my cluster and choose add host to cluster. I'm going to type in file server two. Click connect. And there's file server two. It's also going to show my identifier 
as two. So the first one is one, second one is two. If we hit the drop down, you can see a lot more identifiers. You can add a lot more of the servers into your cluster if you want. And once again, default state is started. Click next. And I can edit ports once again if I want to. And I've clicked finish. So this usually takes anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute, and then it will show up as started. And you can see initial host state on the right hand side of file server once has started and converged means that it converged the IP address of the cluster to the local IP address. So that's exactly what we want. And now we can see that our cluster has been created. If you'd like to delete a cluster, so that's the difference between NIC teaming and clustering as far as network clustering goes and why you'd use them. What's the different uh, purposes for them? NIC teaming is going to give you redundancy as far as the network interface cards for a single server, whereas network load balancing will load balance.